All right. Again, good morning, everyone. I am your teacher for Science 10. Uh, by the way, setting up standards, uh, some of you are uh, already added me up in Facebook, and you have already seen also the conversation of my uh, previous students. Oh, well, definitely, I'm really serious with science, um, especially uh, nowadays that, you know, some of the students really take it for granted science, which is a big insult in my part. Aside from that, uh, some of you also didn't, you know, uh, you just taken for granted also the activities, which is impact in your grade. I am a typical teacher that uh, will not give grades to those who don't have output of course, right? Just to clarify, uh, I, I am really serious with science. Aside from that, I want you to learn science by heart, not just by numbers. You know what I mean? Because this is not just for grades. I want you to aim high because you're paying for it, right? You're paying for the knowledge and then you, you're just ignoring it, okay? Well, I will be preparing you for your senior high school, okay? I understand that uh, this is a pandemic situation. That is why I am adjusting myself towards you. Okay, even the activities. No, it, the activities there is just like, you know, you can just copy paste and everything. Correct? But I want you to internalize. That is why some of the questions there, if you're going to look at the questions, those are higher order thinking skills questions and enable for you to, you know, to analyze, to generate your own ideas. Hope you really understand why we're doing this. Right? Am I making that clear, grade 10? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. And hopefully also, yes. um, some yes. of you will be, you know, will be engaged into science. If you have questions uh, with the lesson, particularly uh, the one we had discussed, or you have questions in the middle of the discussion, it's it's okay to interrupt, okay? Again, it's okay to interrupt. You can interrupt anytime, since I want you also to interact with me, okay? Am I making that clear? All right? Yes. yes. Okay, I'll yes. be sharing my screen to yes. the PowerPoint presentation. We'll be, uh, our topic will be electromagnetic waves. And I think you have done this one in your previous years. And this is just a review because grade 10 is, uh, the, the grade 10 topics are just introductions for grade 11. The real battle is in grade 11 or the senior high. Electromagnetic waves, you can have this one in physics or physical science in grade 11. Any question before we start? Can you see my shared screen? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, okay. Again, our topic is in electromagnetic waves. This is just introduction. Um, I am your teacher, Mark J. O. Reyes. You can call me Sir M. J. Reyes because we have another MJ, so MJ Ngalot, right? Okay, let's move. What is then electromagnetic waves? Okay, can you read um, Kayle? Kayle, how can I pronounce your name, by the way? Kayle. Kayle, okay. What are electromagnetic waves? Electromagnetic waves, or EM waves, are waves that are created as a result of vibrations between an electric field and a magnetic field. In other words, EM waves are composed of oscillating magnetic and electric fields. Correct. Okay. When you say electromagnetic waves, these are created by vibrations. Okay. These vibrations now actually moves 
it depends upon the area. Okay? There are some electromagnetic waves that, you know, um, move towards a solid, move towards a, a liquid or a gas or a vacuum. It depends upon. So that is why oscillating means moving. Okay? It's oscillating means moving. Oscillating also is uh, moving up and down. Okay? Other term. What else? Yes, I want you to ask uh, those questions now, with, with particularly with the terms, because we'll be handling a lot of terms and we will be, you know, simplifying all of these terms. We'll make this as easy as possible. Okay, question so far? Question so far? And so far. All right, so, far. so let's move. EM waves travel in a constant velocity of 3 by 3 by 108 meters per, uh, meters per second with a power of negative 1. Meaning to say this is the uh, speed of light. Again, 3 by 108 meters per second to the power of negative 1. This is the speed of light in a vacuum because vacuum don't have a medium. Are you familiar with the vacuum? Not the vacuum cleaner? Are you familiar with the vacuum? No. Okay. Uh, not the exact definition. Okay. Vacuum is an open field space without any medium, just like your black hole. One good example of a vacuum is a black hole. Okay. So without a medium, meaning to say there is no gravity and there is no what there is no air there is no gas in there so that's vacuum it's clear okay they are deflected neither by electric field nor by magnetic field however they're capable of showing interference or diffraction they can be diffracted or they can be interfered okay diffracted what is diffracted by the way diffracted any idea with the word diffracted? Grade 10? No, sir. I don't know what's diffracted. Okay. Refraction and diffraction. It's a refract and diffract. Okay, another term, reflection and diffraction. When you say reflect, bounce back. Bounce back. How about diffract? Spread, teacher. Diffraction. Spread. Diffraction meaning? Spread, Pass teacher. Through. Spread, yes. Spread. Spread. Okay. What else? That's good. That's correct. Bend, spreading, those are diffraction. So they are actually capable of spreading and interfering. Okay, interfering. An electromagnetic wave can travel through anything, be it in air, solid, or a vacuum. Okay? It does not need a medium to propagate it to, or travel from one place to another. Correct. Again, it does not need any medium. That is why it can travel through a vacuum. Mechanical waves, like sound waves and water waves, on the other hand, need a medium to travel. Why? Because these are mechanical waves. Again, mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves are two different things. Okay? When you say mechanical waves, like sound waves, these are created or it cannot travel through a vacuum. Okay? It needs a medium in order for it to travel. Unlike electromagnetic waves, it doesn't need any medium to travel. That is why it can travel through a vacuum. On the other hand, EM waves are transverse waves. We'll be talking about transverse waves later. This means that they are measured by amplitude, height, and wavelength, the distance between highest and lowest points of two consecutive waves. 
also a an em waves or electromagnetic waves question so far question so far can you give a uh, teacher yes audrey teacher uh can you give us an example like an example for mechanical waves like just like um like how it is you know okay one good example of a mechanical wave is have you seen have you tried um um dropping a stone in a water and the water ripples yes the rippling effect of the water is is a mechanical wave okay so this okay. mechanical wave cannot travel to air because it needs water in order for it to travel okay sound wave also sound waves cannot travel in a vacuum you cannot hear sound in a vacuum that is that is why because there is no medium for it to travel sound waves only travel in what in air that's the medium for, for it to travel that's a good question audrey thank you for that any other Wait, question teacher, so teacher, a medium teacher it's like um it's like something that can help it travel can help yes. the wave travel ah okay thank you ah okay you're talking about the medium or the media uh, when you say medium this is medium somewhat like a matter um uh possible it could be no when you say medium um this is a, a anything that you know help a certain wave move or this is the way no? this is a pathway for a certain em waves or certain mechanical waves to move okay just okay, like teacher. our platform no? zoom this is a medium for us to communicate okay thank you teacher. this is our way to communicate thank you audrey i like the question any other question any other question? Please ask questions if there are some terminologies that you find it hard to understand because uh, I am here to unlock those difficulties. Okay? The highest point of a web is called crests. Are you familiar with this? Did you discuss this one? Whereas the lowest point is known as throw. Electromagnetic waves can be split into range of frequencies. Okay, again, electromagnetic waves can be split into different frequencies or ranges of frequencies. This is known as electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, this is known as electromagnetic yes, spectrum. Yes. What do you mean by crest? Okay, we'll be discussing about crests and throw. Okay, the highest point of the wave. I have illustrations also with crests and throw. Okay, I'll be answering that question after this. I think the illustration is after this. This is known as the electromagnetic spectrum. Example of EM waves are radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves. Are you familiar with this? X rays, of course. You're familiar with X rays? Yes, sir. And gamma rays. The gamma rays are used in treating cancer. Okay, there you go. The crest is in the highest. If you're if you're going to look at your wavelength or your wave or your electromagnetic magnetic spectrum, you can see that it is oscillating. This is now the oscillation. Okay. Now the crest is in the highest. This is the highest portion of your wave, and the throw is in the lower. Okay. The amplitude is the distance between the center line and the crest or the throw. Okay, that, that's the amplitude. And the wavelength is the distance between crest to crest, throw to throw. Okay, question so far? Question? Answer. None. All right, let's move. Amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. So these are three things that we need to consider 
in an, in a, an electromagnetic spectrum, okay? As you might already know, a wave has a throw, which is the lowest point, and the crest and the highest point. The vertical distance between the tip of the crest and the wave's central axis is known as amplitude. Again, this is the amplitude. The central axis, the distance between the crest and the distance between the throw is called the amplitude. Okay? This is the property associated with brightness or intensity of the wave. The horizontal distance between two consecutive throws or crests, as what I had discussed a while ago, is known as wavelength of the wave. Okay? These lengths can be visualized as follows. Okay, again, going back, amplitude is the distance between the central axis going to the crest or going to the throw and amplitude and um and frequency is the distance between crest to crest and throw to throw keep in mind that some waves including electromagnetic waves also oscillate in space correct because it can travel without a medium and therefore they are oscillating at a given position as time passes the time quantity known as a wave frequency refers to the number of full wavelength to pass that pass by a given point of space every second, every second of the every second. The SI unit for frequency is hertz, which is equivalent to per second. So again, written as per second or per second to the power of negative one again usually this is per second okay again frequencies you can actually hear it as hertz which is equivalent to per second okay have you heard the word hertz yes hertz yes okay Please what is it used for sir the hertz yes of course what is it used you for your radio frequencies uses hertz, right? Uh, radio okay. frequencies so it's used hertz. for technology? It uses four frequencies. If you're handling frequencies, then you're using, you're using hertz. Okay. okay. The wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. The one that you have answered, remember? The relationship between wavelength and yeah. frequency? Yeah. That is that the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, and vice yeah. versa. The higher the frequency, the shorter the, the, the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Still the same. The relationship given is in the equation. What is C again? This is constant. The speed of light is equal to because again, remember that your wavelength or the speed of your wavelength is equal to the speed of light. That is why speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Times the frequency. Yes. Okay. Let's move forward. Again, your speed of light and your speed in terms of EM speed or electromagnetic spectrum speed is the same. Let's say it's equal, which is equal to 3 by 10 raised to the power of 8 meters per second. And that's the speed of light. The relationship reflects an important fact that all electromagnetic radiation, remember that all magnetic radi radiation, regardless of wavelength or frequency, travels as the speed of light. Okay, this is again, uh, in, in some scientists, they're, they're talking about the speed of light, huh? that if we uh, overcome the speed of light, we can have the time travel. Yes, but I heard that. It, it is still under investigation until now. Even Einstein has a, a, a definition. Einstein also has a calculation, but sure. we cannot... Yes. Is there the the famous 
uh, equation ba the EMC squared? How is it related to the topic? Is it related? Uh, EMC squared is talking about uh, the time here and the time in space are relative. So it's talking about the speed of light. It is talking about also uh, the relativity by Einstein. The theory of relativity. So the time here and the time in space is relative. That's the equation, the famous equation of Einstein. But again, uh, it is just a matter of how you deflected or, uh, a certain object. Like for example, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to move an object up and down, and if you're going to move an object in a straight line, okay, it matters, right? Same as space. So the connection, there is a, 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 a proportion or there is a connection between the moving object here in Earth and the moving object in, in outer space or in outside the globe, you know, outside the you know, Earth. So that is why Einstein called it as theory of relativity. It's relative. You know, it, it's a matter of how you, you, how you, you, know, you uh, move the, the object on space and move the object on Earth. That's it. So much for that. Let's move forward. Any other question? Question so far? No. The number of crisps that pass the given point within one second is described as frequency of a wave. Again, one second is equal to the frequency of the wave, which is hertz. One wave or cycle per second is called hertz. Same. Okay. After, it is coined after the name Henrich Hertz, okay, who established the existence of radio waves. Actually, Hen Henrich Hertz discovered that there are a lot of frequency waves, and these waves can be used you know, in order for communication. That is why he actually created radio waves. No, he actually created or discovered the radio waves and created some radio, some radio okay, for us to use until now. It's because of Henry Hertz. A wave with two cycles pass in the point in one second has two frequencies, or has, has a two frequency of two hertz, two cycles, meaning to say it has two frequency because it passed with two cycles. Okay, question so far? Question so far? Okay, let's move. Electromagnetic waves have, have crisps and throws similar to those with ocean waves. Okay. If, have you seen an ocean wave? No, it has a, a, a part which is high and a part which is low. Okay. The distance between crisp is the wavelength. We already discussed this one. The shortest wavelengths are just fractions of the size of an atom, while the longest wavelengths Scientists currently study can be larger than the diameter of our planet. Yes, it could be. But still, it is in the study. Okay. We still have 10 minutes left. Okay. So this is the wavelength. As you can see, this is the wavelength. Chris to Chris throughout the row. Correct? Frequency now is two wavelengths. So one, two, one, two. Okay. Two wavelengths is equivalent to one frequency or one hertz. Okay. Question so far? Question so far? None. All right. Energy. Again, um, this. Electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic spectrum has energy. It releases energy, correct? An electromagnetic wave could also be described in terms of energy in the unit measured called volts or electron volts. Okay. An electron volt is an amount of kinetic energy needed to move an electron through one volt potential to another. Okay. Again, 
An electron volt is an amount of kinetic energy. Potential and kinetic. Are you familiar with potential energy and kinetic energy? Can no. <laughs> yes. Okay. No. This is new to me, sir. Ah, this is new to you. Potential, yes. but only kinetic. Okay. Potential yeah. energy is stored energy. Like, for example, I have here my phone. If I will put my phone here and I will not touch it, it has potential energy. Okay? Remember the, the laws of motion by Newton? That an object at rest remains at rest. An object in motion remains in motion unless acted by the imbalance force on an outside force. Okay. When you didn't move or you will not move your phone or any object, it has potential energy. But if you move your phone, the potential energy, what? Will be converted into kinetic energy. Okay. What else? If I will put my phone here in my table, it will not move, go, it will not actually fall down. Why? Because there is an external force that acting on it. Yes. Okay, the table. But if we, if we will remove the table and remove the, the floor, it will continuously move down. That's again the explanation of Newton's law, first law of motion by Newton. Anyway, so much for kinetic and potential. Again, potential is stored energy. Kinetic is moving energy or the released energy. Okay. Teacher. Yes, Audrey. Teacher, what if it's like vibrating, the phone is vibrating? What kind of energy is that? That's kinetic already. Because there is force, external force acting on it. Ah. Uh, okay, the vibration is it was actually caused by the vibration of the phone. Okay, you activated the vibration, right? Okay, any other question? Thank you, okay. Audrey. Any other question? Okay. None. There are okay. some in the chat box, teacher. I will check the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Frequency calculus between wavelengths. Two wavelengths. Again, one frequency is equivalent to two wavelengths. Okay. Right. Let's move forward. Any questions so far? Any other questions? Consider a jump rope with its end being pulled up and down okay the more energy is needed to make rope we'd have more waves just like this one this illustration okay the if you're going to move the rope faster you will create more waves correct yes okay yes, but yes. if you're going to move the wave or move the rope slower or slow you will create lesser waves. Same concept. Okay. Have you seen the energy there? You exerted more energy in creating more waves. Correct? You're exerting more energy. But in, in exerting less energy, you're creating less waves. Same. It's the same concept. Okay. Let's move forward. Let's move to the types of electromagnetic waves. Okay, radio waves, the common waves, and sometimes these waves are actually misinterpreted. Why? Because uh, wireless microphones are using also, you know, radio waves. And some of these wireless microphones are connected to the radio stations. That is why if you're going to turn on your, your wireless microphone and then there are some interference or inference, you can actually get some inference from the radio stations because it is the same frequency. Again, these are just frequencies. Now, it, you need to reset your, your wireless microphone and create another you know, frequency for the microphone to be useful again. Anyway, so much for that. Radio waves. Radio waves have the longest wavelengths of all the electromagnetic waves. Longest because it reaches far. Okay? It reaches far. 
They range from around a foot long of several miles, al miles long. Radio waves can often be used to transmit data and have been used for sort of applications like radio, satellites, radar, and computer networks. We're using radio waves in radio phones. Are you familiar with the radio phones? Your walkie-talkie? Okay. Walkie-talkie yes. uses radio uh, waves. On, uh, the smartphones, sir. Smartphones also is using radio waves. Your telecommunications, your smart globe sun, they're using radio waves. With their switch towers. Have you seen their switch towers? Of telecoms, telecommunications? It actually creates a radio waves. Okay? It is one kind of EM or electromagnetic waves. That is why it's really dangerous that you're living near a, a satellite or near a, a um, we're calling that one switch towers or satellites. Switch towers. Because it creates a lot of radiation. Your radio waves also create radiation. That is why. So if you can observe, if you're using your phone for a long time, talking to somebody, it creates heat. Correct? Sure. It's so, you know, I'm, while I'm using my phone for a longer period of time, like an hour, init kaayo sa dunggan. Why? Because it creates heat. Remember that these are energies. Right? So we continue. Any question? So radio Nine. waves are the ones that um, like gives radiation? No, not only radio waves. There are a lot of EM waves that creates radiation. Okay. I think, uh, I think all of them create radiation. No? Based on studies, all of them create radiation. That is why if you have um, a, a family member or, you know, that has cancer, Please, 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 no? remove the phones on their sides. No, do not let them use the phone because it can harm them. Okay? It can fa fasten the metastasis or the spread of cancer. Okay? Am I making that clear? Again, okay. if you have relatives, if you have a family member that has cancer, remove all the gadgets because even radio waves create radiation. Okay? Remember that they are really uh, sensitive now with radiations, okay? Because it can trigger the cancer cells to uh, to move faster, or to metastasize, or to spread. But don't, gamma, but don't gamma rays treat cancer? Was it gamma rays? Yes, gamma rays treat cancers. But yes, gamma. correct, correct. Because these are used for treatment. And again, if you're exposed to gamma rays without any concern or without cancer or without any treatment, it can harm you. Right? Am I making that clear? X-rays also. Do not expose yourself to X-rays. If you have gone X-ray for about a month ago, then definitely you will have your X-ray by six months after. Okay? Do not expose yourself to X-rays. Do not expose yourself to more radio waves. And of course, do not expose yourself to 